Okay, everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live, day two from VMworld 2012. We're here in San Francisco at the Moscone Center, north in the hang space. So stop by and see us, check it out, stop by the Cube, grab a beverage. Uh, and I'm here with Stu Miniman, my co-host. And we're joined by Laz Vecuraitis, who is with Dell. Uh, Longtime Cube guest, Cube alum, sure. welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you, thanks for having me again. So we're here again at, uh, at VMworld. It's uh, you know, the, never, the perpetual party here and uh, all kinds of innovation. We're hearing about software-defined networking, software-defined storage. We just came off the Dell Storage Forum uh, sure. in June. So sure. why don't you give us the update? What's been going on since then? And well, uh, you know, what do you guys get going on here? We, uh, you know, we, we actually uh, outed a couple of uh, interesting concepts that we've been hiding for quite some time at Dell Storage Forum, and uh, I reiterated them again today uh, and yesterday. Uh, and you mean uh, we didn't talk about those in the cube last time? <laughs> <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, we did. Okay, I, I, I think so. it was with Stu. <laughs> uh, we we have uh, this concept which we call uh, host virtualized storage, which uh, it looks like is exactly the same as uh, you know software defined storage. Uh, effectively, what we're doing is we're defining what the uh, storage I.O. platform is. It's a, a software workload uh, that runs our firmware, uh, the Equalogic firmware, uh, and allows an immense amount of flexibility as to how you define uh, your storage services. Uh, so as we continue to integrate in virtualized environments, uh, our, our customers are going to be able to control these policies for uh, you know, their, their uh, compute workloads at a much finer level of granularity. You'll be able to define uh, a, a software workload, which is your storage. You'll be able to define where it lives, how it behaves, and you'll be able to define it uh, on a per application basis. And uh, you can do it many, many times. You don't have to go out and buy a physical array for every application. And so it completely changes the dynamics of the data center and how you pay for things and how you configure things. Uh, the capex cycle, you know, is is a much smoother thing as a result of this. So it's it's quite revolutionary. Let's talk about how we got here. So we mean, you know, years ago, Mertz called it the software mainframe, and and you know, others have called it the cloud operating system. Now the new buzzword is software-defined networking. So really, what we're talking about here is uh, VMware uses the terms of abstract, pool, and automate. Sure. Right. Okay. So that's the sort of high-level umbrella. So then, and they've done a clearly a good job of, uh, of that on compute and memory, um, storage, it's just been hard, you know. Sure. You, in fact, the ecosystem had to do that, right? With sure, integrating sure. Integrating APIs and, and the like. Um, so where are we in that whole, you know, vision of making storage invisible? It sounds like you're saying we're there today. Well, not, not quite. I think there's a, a lot of work to be done. Uh, I, if you uh, listen to the keynotes uh, this week, you, you probably heard a little bit about what they're calling virtual volumes or, or, or VVOLs. Yep. Um, or or uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, granular or VM granular VM storage. VM granular storage, right. Uh, that is uh, a, a huge initiative that uh, we're participating in, uh, along with all the, uh, the usual suspects. Uh, that is I think the ultimate vision for uh, where we want to be, where you get to the point uh, where each VM has its own storage policy. Uh, up until now, uh, all the storage vendors have had to deal with uh, a per LUN policy. So you put a whole bunch of virtual machines on a LUN, and uh, by virtue of the fact that they share that LUN, they share the policies, they share the performance, uh, and you know you, it's very hard to police that uh, in a large data center. So what we're doing now uh, with with VVOLs is basically breaking that out. Now that that's the ultimate vision, uh, and on top of that, uh, you know that that kind of uh, policy-based automation, uh, you probably want a whole bunch of other services, uh, and this is where uh, the uh, the host virtualized storage concept comes in because there uh, you have other policies like snapshotting. Uh, that might be uh, uh, application specific. Uh, how many snapshots? What kind of replication? Uh, and um, you know, caching where you want to place things. Uh, th those can actually be encapsulated in a piece of software. Uh, yeah. So, Laz, um, I wonder if we can dig a little deep in there. You t talked mm -hmm. about kind of uh, caching and tiering and where sure. things fit. So, uh, Wikibon CTO David Floyer says what we really need is an IO centric model of architecture for the data center. So, uh, while we know Flash is this kind of revolutionary wave coming on, it's not just about kind of putting it into our existing technologies, but how do we redesign and re architect that? Uh, can you talk about what, what Dell's doing uh, you know, in, in, the, in the Flash space? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, then another thing that we talked about yesterday uh, in, in our our uh, breakout session is the uh, RNA technology, which we're going to uh, christen fluid cache. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, we, we have a couple of interesting uh, innovations uh, that are going to be coming out over the course of the next year. Uh, our 12G servers have these front-loaded NVM cards, uh, which uh, they look just like disks. Uh, you, you, you put them in, uh, they're 175 to 350 gig of just pure flash, PCIe attached, so they're much, much faster. Uh, and you treat them like disks in a disk array. So this is going to be a, a very, very interesting thing to have on every server in your data center. Uh, so effectively what we're doing is taking the, the RNA technology and building uh, a fluid cache, which is a distributed caching substrate that lives right next to the compute. Uh, and it behaves just like the Equalogic storage in the sense that you can add, remove, vacate, upgrade, uh, it, it just uh, you know expands and contracts dynamically. So uh, whenever you provision an application, uh, you can provision a certain amount of flash on the local uh, storage for it as well, and that uh, will actually follow the application around because again we're, we're distributed uh, you know storage infrastructure even at the uh, at the front end. Uh, and we have all sorts of really interesting technology that we're developing to coordinate the data protection uh, mechanisms in the back end. So you, you still do need to have a SAN to protect your data. Uh, and snapshotting and replication still need to be done there. And there is a delicate dance that uh, we have to coordinate in order to make that all possible. One of the key things that we're doing uh, that I don't see a lot of other people doing is uh, you know, building a, a full read-write flash infrastructure on the server. So it's not just you know, writing through to the SAN, we're actually taking the writes on the server and making the server flash highly available. Uh, and what this will do, if you look at uh, what the vision will look like over time, what you'll see is that uh, you, you'll have some really, really, really fast storage very close to the compute, uh, and you're gonna have uh, much slower stuff uh, you know, sort of in the center of, of your data center, and it's doing a lot of the uh, you know, data protection, the, the backup, uh, the replication, those types of things uh, will be relegated there. And so you're kind of seeing uh, you know, storage in the data center um, sort of uh, you know, bifurcating into two buckets, uh, and one bucket is really, really, really fast and looks like memory, Another is um, more economical uh, and has a lot of uh, other you know, management attributes uh, that you need for retention. Yeah, and, and so, so yeah, we, we yeah. actually might even, there might even be three or four different <laughs> buckets here. Yeah. So well, one of the follow-up questions I, I want to ask you on this is, when virtualization first came in, it really broke disk. Sure. You know, it took us many years in the storage industry to kind of, you know, take that, you know, the LUNs and how how we manage this environment and, and change it. So, have we learned from that? Flash is kind of this this big change, and you know, some of the first flash solutions that came out. Oh, it's not really going to work with vMotion, and now we're, it seems we're saying so. What 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 do you see the the kind of the ramp up in, in the the virtualization environment for flash, and uh, you know, how, how are you guys seeing that progress? Uh, well, you know, um, in, in, you know, we we have uh, we have to work with VMware and all the other uh, platform vendors in order to advance the the, the cause of, of uh, Flash, right? Um, and you know, Dell we're uniquely positioned because we actually sell the servers as well, uh, and uh, you know, we are um, spending a lot of time uh, trying to push our vision uh, with. Uh, the people that are actually building the operating system. So, um, you know, I, I can't talk, talk too much about, um, you know, what uh, what we're doing with VMware and uh, and their competitors up north. Uh, but uh, you know, they're very much aware of what needs to happen and what the evolutions are going to be uh, on the server platform. And uh, you know, over the course of the next year or two, you're going to start to see some uh, really interesting innovations uh, with, uh, you know, how we deliver value of Flash. Uh, in, in these operating systems, um, you know, the, we're, we're going to, like I said, we're going to virtualize it uh, the same way we virtualize disk uh, today. And what we're hoping to do is um, make it so fluid that, and you know, an application can take advantage of flash like it takes advantage of memory today. Uh, and you know, we will police it. We hope that the operating systems uh, and the system software can actually have uh, policy infrastructure and things, uh, you know, underneath that. Uh, to in real time determine who can have the flash and who uh, really should be, you know, talking to something slower. So, so okay, sorry. So, so I really wanted to follow up on that. And so, in in your view, will the point of control for that decision making be 
the, the, at least the server, right? It won't be the, the slow storage array, will it? Or the storage Well, well there, there's a, you know, I think there's a, a real uh, <laughs> interesting discussion about, well, who actually owns the policy engine? Uh, and, uh, can can and slow storage own that fa policy engine for fast flash up at the server level? I, I think there needs to be a bigger brain uh, somewhere outside of, of the, uh, the, the slow storage and, mm -hmm. the, uh, and the fast cache, uh, because each one of those needs to make local decisions uh, that uh, are, are based on information that's only available locally. Uh, but you have a policy engine somewhere in every data center that, that really is sort of the, the control plane brain uh, of all of these things. And so, uh, you know, there really isn't anything out there right now. New model is yeah. what you're proposing. Yeah. A and, you know, I think that that's uh, an opportunity that you're going to see a lot of people, uh, you know, sort of discussing. I bet you this is something that, that will come up next year uh, as we uh, revisit these, uh, these subjects. Do you agree? I mean, Stu mentioned David Floyer has also made the statement that all active data is, you know, in the near term, near to midterm, going to be in flash. Yeah, I, I think I think that's an outgrowth of uh, what I said, right? It, it, you know, active data uh, will end up getting. If, if you look at the fluid cache architecture, active data will get pulled into that server, uh, and uh, you know, the the data that's not frequently accessed will naturally get pushed back out. And and you would not, hope, ideally, you'd never access it on spinning disk, right? Wouldn't that be the perfect world? Well, that would be a waste of power if you put it. <laughs> in, but but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, would, uh, it would be really easy to meet the SLA if you never actually well, I'm saying, to read if, it. Well, I'm saying, if I access yeah. it, I want it to come <laughs> yeah. out of flash if it's active, right? So yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I do agree with that. Okay. And, and you, um, you know, what we are finding, actually, I, I've seen a lot of surveys. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the same kind of data. About 20% you know, of your data is reasonably frequently accessed, mm -hmm. and 80% of it. Yeah. Yeah. 80% yeah, of it. Yeah, 20 is, 80. Fine, let's, yeah. we can agree on that. Yeah, <laughs> the Pareto rule, right? <laughs> so the, yeah, the, the vast majority of it is going to be sitting in the bit, bit bucket. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Laz, you've got a long relationship with VMware on the engineering side, sure. uh, you know, going back before Dell. So, uh, you just can you speak to kind of the ecosystem a partnership that you've got? You know, a lot of people talking about the kind of the relationship of VMware and EMC, and you know, personally, your engineering group. How's the relationship between Dell and VMware? Have you seen a change over the last, you know, six months or a year? Or, you know, where where are things? That, that's a good question. I, I think the VMware people are uh, incredibly gracious with my team and, and uh, I have so many touch points uh, into VMware uh, with uh, various parts of the engineering organization, with various parts of the product management organization. Uh, they uh, have always been very, very open to conversations uh, and I don't think I've seen any real changes over the past year or two. Uh, you know, they've become a much larger organization and so it, that, you know, that happens, there's just more people but then again, my organization is much larger and, and uh, we just have more touch points and you know, it, it's a matter of coordinating everything and making sure that everyone's singing from you know, the same hymnal but I don't think that there's been a change in the openness. Uh, I don't think that there's been a, a change in the depth of cooperation. Uh, we are uh, involved, as I mentioned, in all the big initiatives uh, that the VMware has uh, you know, undergoing right now in some of the things that were uh, spoken about yesterday and today in the keynotes. Uh, you know, I know that, that Dell is always being mentioned. We, we are, uh, especially in the ecologic side, always there uh, talking about virtual volumes and, and you know, vStorage and the like. And so uh, we, we plan to continue to do that. Um, you know, there, there is an interesting question about uh, whether this has become a big boys club. And, uh, you know, and that's a better question to ask, I, I think. You know, I, I was lucky because uh, you know, I started talking to VMware when we were Equalogic and uh, we were very, very small and uh, VMware wasn't all that big either and it was a different environment. Uh, right now, uh, you have the big four or five depending, I don't want to offend anyone, um, but uh, you know, there are a lot of startups that would like to be Equalogic again uh, and I'm not sure that it's easy be just because of the nature of the, the beast. There's so many places to, to talk to VMware. Yeah, and it was, it was not easy for a small company back then to get VMware's attention. They didn't have a ton of storage resources. So, yep. all right, Laz, well, thanks again for coming on theCUBE. Uh, always a pleasure, and uh, good sure. luck with the rest of the event. Okay. We'll see thanks you back Lance. east. Bring Michael by next time. All right, keep <laughs> it right try. there. We'll be right back uh, with Frank Sloopman, uh, tech rock star, uh, CEO of ServiceNow, former CEO of Data Domain, is up next. Uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back. SiliconANGLE.TV is theCUBE.